Um, the remote itself, it has three different buttons on it. So on the side here, if you can see it, um, there's a little button there. That's your tone button. So if you wanted to tone your dog, you just press that button and it'll give you an audible beep from your collar. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go turn this collar on, that way you can hear it. It's got a button on the top, a waterproof button on the top. So all you do is you press that, you'll hear it beep. That means your collar's on. And you also have a, if you can see it, it's a blinking light. And that'll actually turn red when the battery's getting low. So that's your battery indicator on that. So when you press the tone button, it just beeps. So just like when you start it up, it beeps. That gives your dog an audible warning saying, you know, hey, I'm doing something not right. So that's a very important tool when you're training the dog. And we'll talk about that more here in just a second. There's also two other buttons on the front of the remote. Um, you can see them in the yellow there, button here and button there. One of them is for the NIC stimulation. So that'll send a single stimulation to your dog. The other one's a continuous stimulation. So if your dog's doing something that it wasn't supposed to be doing, I usually only use the NIC feature, but you do have the continuous. Um, if the dog's not paying attention to the NIC, you know, you can hold down the continuous button and it'll shock as long as you're pushing it. So um, the sport dog also has a thumb dial. So you just roll your thumb and that gives you your different intensity levels. Like I said, eight different levels of intensity from one to eight. Okay, so one thing I like to do when I get a training collar is I like to test it on myself. So I like, you know, our dogs like our family. So I wanna know, you know, what my dog's feeling. So I think it's very important when you buy a training collar to actually train it, you know, try it on yourself and, you know, figure out what the different levels correlate to. So what I like to do is I'll take the collar, I'll place it in the meat of my hand, and then I'll just start going through the different settings. So I'll start on one, press it. You know, one, you can barely feel it's just a little tingling. Two, it's kind of like a nine volt on your tongue. Um, three, it's kind of like a static shock if you walked across your living room and touched the doorknob, and it goes up from there. One thing to remember, I mean, you're doing direct skin on contact here, so it's gonna be more, uh, more stimulation than your dog will feel through, you know, fur and the coat and everything. Hair is not a very good conductor, so. But it'll give you an idea, you know, kind of what your dog is feeling. Um, on our dog, um, I just use, you know, the most I use is four. Um, generally, it's just two or three. Um, that's usually all you need for your dog. You're just trying to, you're not trying to hurt them, you're just trying to get their attention. So that's what this is great for, you know. But just try it, you know, try it on your own hand. You have an idea, of, you know, what your dog's feeling. And I always start with less than I think I need on a, you know, when you're training a dog first. You know, always start with a little less than you think you need. Um, just so you're kind of getting used to the collar, your dog's getting used to the collar. Um, it just kind of works out better for everybody. And then, like I said, it's, it's a learning tool. So we're not punishing our dog with this, we're using it to teach our dog. That's the important thing. You know, a lot of people say, well, it's, it's terrible for dogs. Um, you know, it hurts your dog. And you'll see when we get um, our German Shepherd, um, she loves playing outside. And we had a big issue with our German Shepherd chasing squirrels. Um, she loved to chase squirrels which was great for her, but when we try to take her outside and play Frisbee or something, my wife and I, you know, she would run after a squirrel and she listens very well to all the commands, but when she gets focused in on something like a squirrel, um, they're just, she wouldn't listen. So what we did is, you know, we purchased a collar. The way I like to train with collars is, the first thing I like to do always, you know, when, when you get the collar on the dog, you know, take it outside and always start with a verbal command. The dog has to know what you want it to do before it can do it. So you can't just, you know, the dog does something bad, you just shock it. That's not really the purpose of this. Um, you want to use this to train your dog. So that it's a training aid, just like anything else. So say we take Bella outside and she sees a squirrel and she loves squirrels. <laughs> he takes off running at the squirrel. First thing, um, she gets a verbal command. So Bella here. and. You know, if she doesn't listen to that, which when we first started, you know, it didn't make any difference to her. She saw a squirrel, she was all for it. So um, then she gets a tone. So Bella here, she doesn't come, she gets a tone. So, you know, it's on her neck, she hears the tone. But initially they're not gonna understand what that means. You know, they hear beep, it's not gonna stop them. They don't know what's going on. So next thing you're gonna do, after you've done both of those, so she's still running at the squirrel, you're going to hit the, the nick button. I use the nick button. I very rarely use a continuous. Um, the nick is usually plenty um, to get the dog's attention. So, and, you know, initially she would get it. So we go verbal command, tone button, nick button. 
So we'd nick her and she didn't like that. So, you know, it doesn't hurt her. Just like when you, you know, you walk over, you touch your, touch your finger to a doorknob, you get shocked. You know, it doesn't hurt you, but it's not the most pleasant thing in the world either. And it's not something, you know, you're more careful about touching that doorknob next time, right? So it's the same kind of thing with your dog. We're trying to teach them that they're doing unwanted behavior and we're trying to break that. So it took about a day um, with the, well, initially with the, with the nicking, um, it only took a couple times, you know, going through the steps. She knew once she heard that tone, the nick was next and she didn't like the nick. So, you know, she chased after a squirrel you know, we'd be on a walk, she'd chase the squirrel, Bella here, I hit the tone, she'd stop. You know, that was after it only took a couple times of actually stimulating her to get for her to get the idea that she didn't like the didn't like the nick. So um, and then maybe a day, two days maybe of playing outside quite a bit, um, where we didn't have to use the tone much. Um, you know, you take her out, she'd see a squirrel, she'd start to run, Bella here, and she'd stop. I mean, it's that quick and that big a, and nothing else would stop her before we got the training collar. I mean, it was just like night and day. Um, so it's a really, really great training aid if you have a dog that you're really having problems with. Um, another great thing about this is um, our dog loves to play outside, but you know, a German Shepherd, as with many big dogs, it's not great for them to be on a leash, um, whether you're walking them or be out on a chain. Um, they just, they need more exercise than that. So this gives you the ability to actually you know, get your dog outside and exercise with it. So, you know, we put the collar on, we go on a walk. It used to be we had to have her on a leash um, when we were walking her because she would just go everywhere and we had no control. And we had no safety net. I mean, if she ran off, you know, Bella's like part of our family. So if she ran off, I mean, that was not good for us, you know. So with this, we take her on walks now. We put her collar on her. She can run and play and do her thing. You know, if she does get distracted by a squirrel or a dog, you know, if she doesn't listen to the verbal, we've got the tone, but we always have the, you know, the stimulation too if we need it. It's kind of a good backup. And this has a 400 yard range. So it's got a quarter mile range. So it's not like, even with big dogs, I mean, our dog is extremely fast, but it's not like she can get away from, you know, outside of a 400 yard range um, before you have a chance to, to do something about it. So that works out really, really well. Um, for our dog, you know, a lot of people talk about um, training collars as being such a negative thing and dogs hate them, they're scared of them. Um, you'll see in the next video, I'm going to do an actual video, um, Bella and I are going to go outside and play and you'll kind of, you get to see it in action. Um, I won't obviously stimulate her unless she needs it because that's kind of defeats the purpose of all the training I'm done with her. But, um, you know, we'll use the tone button and you can kind of see what that's about. Um, but you'll see. For Bella, it's such a positive thing because with this collar, now she knows she can go outside and play without being on a, a chain or a leash. So for her, that's the greatest thing in the world. So when we're getting ready to go outside, you know, the collar will be sitting somewhere in the house. I'll say, Bella, let's go outside, find your collar. And she will run throughout the house trying to find her collar. And I don't care if it's on a counter, she will find her collar. So once she finds her collar, you know, she's pointing at her collar ready to go because she knows this equals fun. You know, and that's what you want to do with your dog. You don't want to use this as a negative thing. You want to use this as a positive thing. You know, it's going to allow you to get your dog outside to play more, but still have that peace of mind that, you know, your dog's not going to run off. It's not going to run out in the street. And if it does start to do that, you have some control. You can, you know, tone it. You can uh, stimulate it if needed. Um, and you can get, you know, control of your dog and make sure that you're going to be able to keep it safe. Um, so it just, it's just a great thing. Um, so like I said, in the next video, we'll take her outside. You'll see what it's all about. And you'll see that dogs aren't scared of these. So, you know, if you train them properly, dogs are, they love their collars. So, um, and the great thing about, you know, we talked about this being waterproof. We spend a lot of time this summer on the boat, um, out the lake. Bella loves to play in the water. Both are fully waterproof. So you don't have to worry about, you know, anything happening with them. Um, you know, Sport Dog has a limited lifetime warranty. So if anything does happen, support dog will take care of you, no problem. If you have an issue, you can call me um, and we'll get you taken care of as quickly as possible. So a great, great item. I highly recommend this. Um, there's many great training callers on the site. And this is you know, a really good one for just around the house or you know, for hunting dogs if you only need out to 400 yards. This is an excellent way to go. All right, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.